clicked on this video, it means you're interested in emergency preparedness. And you should be, because what better way to show people you love them than to create a safe and secure environment for them to live in. My thing is that I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. So I've rekindled that longing to want to have and build more skills to provide that safe and secure environment for the people I love. It's not hard. I know oftentimes we don't know where to start on some things, but this is a venture that anybody can get into. And it starts relatively simple. Like the idea of having a go bag, something in your car that can help you in case you need it. I mean, it's better to have and not need than need and not have. Or even like having extra canned goods stored around the house. Now I know what you're thinking. Where do I start? And start where exactly you're supposed to start with anything. With having a plan. Because proper planning prevents poor performance. That's the five P's that we learned in the Army. And it's important. Last year, at this time, I weighed like 350 pounds. And now I'm 280 pounds-ish. It's always a struggle. But I know that times are changing and what we all thought was safe and secure and and all that um, if you haven't seen it you know the news lately stuff's getting worse and I for one don't want to take that laying down or as a slob because to be honest, my family deserves more than that. Develop a system with your family. And the first thing you do is you make a group text. And you text your family and you say, check in. So let's just say uh, there's a tornado warning. And you get the report that as the leader of your um, group, of your, we'll just call it a network, family network or otherwise, that you get the report F5 tornado on the ground and it's actually heading, the cone is somewhere headed like in your area. So you send out the text to everybody, check in. Everybody checks in. Now like you don't wanna be overwhelmed with texts so, and everybody wants to be on the same page. So for instance, um, my daughter, she's married. So her husband texts her and says, this is where I'm at. I'm okay. She texts my wife and says, we're all good. Um, and then my wife texts me because I'm the leader and says, everybody is accounted for. And if everybody's not accounted for, then she gives me their last known location. And I start trying to get a hold of that person. Now, if it's a situation that everybody just needs to leave wherever they're at and get home, that's phase two. All right, so phase two. You know there's imminent danger and where everybody is isn't necessarily safe. Let's say it's not an F5 tornado. Let's say it's civil unrest. Um, as a matter of fact, things are absolutely going chaotic. You got two hours to get home, um, there's a lockdown, there's riots and all kinds of stuff like that. It's not quite martial law, but it's nuts. So phase one, you send, you send out the text, check in, everybody checks in. Once it gets back to me and um, I know that everybody is accounted for, I just tell my wife, rally up. I send her that text, rally up. She then sends it out through the network, rally up guess what everybody rallies up all right so we got phase one we got phase two of our communication plan and then phase two shifts into the hunker down stage that's where 
pretty much every prepper starts. That's where you should probably start. It's important to be someplace familiar to you. And you know, that way you don't have to use some crazy skills and you don't have to rely on something you might be rusty with. But it might be over in 72 hours. You never know. The fact of the matter is most disasters, um, if you can get through the first 24 to um, 72 hours, I mean, you're good. So that's something to remember. We, we did phase one, we did phase two. Phase two goes into the hunker down. Um, a lot of preppers call that bugging in. So you're, you're trying to use your, um, your stuff that goes out of date the soonest um, quicker. So earlier into this issue. So you like your, your eggs and your milk and um, stuff that might spoil soon. You use all that stuff. Now, let's get into the ugly part. What um, folks call a grid down scenario. So the power grid in our nation is undoubtedly weak. Everybody knows this. This isn't a secret. This isn't like, if I'm telling you this and you never heard of it, then um, that's scary in and of itself. But let's just say all of a sudden we have, boom, no lights. All the electricity in the United States has gone out. Okay, so what do we do? Well, this is a clear path to phase two. Um, we don't know if we have satellite communications or whatever. So where do your preps start? Now, number one, we're in a country that is super dependent on electronics. That's a fact. The CDC, Homeland Security, all those alphabets, um, they actually released a statement one time, and you can look this up and, and clarify. Um, but basically, within six months, if we didn't have electricity restored, 90% um, of the population would, would die. That's stark information. But the good news is, if you're prepared for this kind of thing, and you have a pretty good idea of how to operate when the lights go out, you are going to be within that top 10%. Communication. Get a plan together for the family. Get everybody to buy into it. Start small. It's just to try to keep everybody safe and secure and everybody on the same page, especially in the times we live in now. Number two, make sure you have a rally point. It can be everybody go to their own house until we know what's going on. It can be everybody visit my house, come on to my house, get to my property. Um, you know, and it can, and if that's the case, then start storing a lot of stuff there. Have caches at everybody else's house. We all have at least three days worth of food in our house. That's the average in, in America. If you don't, then there's where you start. Get three days worth of food, then go to a week, then go to two weeks. You know, try to build upon that. But phase one, communicate. Get everybody on the same page. Because when disaster strikes, yeah, when, everybody needs to be on the same page. If not, it's pandemonium. And then you lose. And sometimes when you lose in a disaster, it costs you your life. Or the life of somebody you love. So yeah, take it that serious. You got to. All right, guys, I love you. God loves you. And remember, Jesus did not come into this world to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. That's John 3, 17. We likely stop reading just before that, but think about that because it matters. All right, guys, peace.